Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with a book review of one of my most anticipated releases of the year. And that would be The Last Word by Taylor Adams. This comes out April 25th, and I'm here to not only review it, but to highly recommend it. I'm gonna put the book down. I've got my notes here. This is probably gonna be a relatively short review because it is such a thriller, like mystery thriller suspense novel. It relies so much on you not knowing many details going into it for it to really be an entertaining suspenseful ride. So basically our main character, Emma, she moves to this uh, like coastal house in Washington and she's there to house sit for a while and it's just her and her dog. And we know that she is battling something like she has depression something in her past has caused her to have this depression and she also is just, just kind of just a recluse i guess so she goes and she's house sitting she only has one neighbor deke and they communicate through a uh whiteboard they each have one that they like write to each other and they use like telescopes or binoculars to like read each other's board because it's like the off season and so no one's really living there these are mostly like vacation homes and since it's like not the vacation season it's just the two of them and she takes or spends a lot of time reading that's really all she does she sits around and she reads on her kindle and hangs out with her dog and we just we know there's something going on mentally with her we know that her neighbor deke is she suspects he's an alcoholic she sees him drink a lot um, and she does some sleuthing on him and she realizes that he used to be a writer or is a retired journalist and he wrote like this really famous true crime novel. But other than that, her whole world, this whole book is this house that she's in. So since she spends a lot of time reading, Deke knows this from seeing her through the windows, from them chit-chatting, they play hangman together as well. Uh, he recommends a book to her and she decides to read it and it is like this horror novel that she absolutely hates like she thinks it's the most horribly written book she's ever read she doesn't like the characters like nothing about it she ends up going on like an amazon or like she ends up reading reviews and she realizes that all these people are like praising this book and she doesn't understand why she literally at one point is like one of these people is this author's mother <laughs> because i can't believe anybody's writing these positive reviews so she decides to go in and write a one-star review and she actually gets a response from the author he messages her and says hey you need to take this down i worked really hard on this book you're affecting my livelihood and this it's not okay for you to put a negative review out there and so i found this really funny because i've seen a lot of discussions and live shows over the past couple of years on booktube and stuff about uh, who reviews are for and if authors should read reviews and if they do should they comment on them should they approach reviewers um or like things of that sort so it's really funny because emma even at one point she's thinking to herself like isn't this like an unwritten rule that authors never do this so that was kind of funny but the author obviously is very angry about her review and she's like, no, I'm not gonna take it down. Like, this is my review. Too bad, so sad, essentially. And so obviously he doesn't take very kindly to that. And things start to happen to Emma at her house that she's staying at. She starts to hear things. She starts to like get wafts of smelling something as well. Like, she doesn't know if it's like cologne or food or something. And then one night she's like half asleep and she thinks she sees someone standing like at the end of her bed. And this kind of, all takes off from there and essentially this book starts really quickly and you get thrown right into it i feel like if you've read his previous works no exit and hairpin bridge you know that it's kind of like just like pedal to the metal right off the bat and once emma starts experiencing these little things more and more things start happening um the owner of the home um, uh contacts her because she's getting notifications on her ring doorbell some weird guy in a mask is standing on her porch in the middle of the night emma thinks she hears him she gets like you know like this it's very creepy there are definitely some very creepy aspects to this because essentially it's like a home invasion type novel 
and it is very creepy at times this book it took me a few days to read but essentially that is because i have a child <laughs> if i did not have a child this easily would have been a sit down binge through it read one sitting we do kind of get a mixed media perspective a little bit because we get excerpts from books excerpts from the author's website so you kind of like learn a little bit more about the author and we do jump back into the past we revisit some memories with emma and we learn more about like her past why she's unemployed and house sitting why she's depressed and so like i really like those aspects of it because i feel like the pacing and what's revealed at certain times worked really well i even got emotional at times because of what emma's issues and experiences are that led her to this like really negative mental state and so i thought that taylor adams did a really good job not only making like this suspenseful like thrilling fun read that you could kind of see like other authors um do it in a way where you don't really care about the characters i kind of want to it's not a slasher novel but i kind of want to compare it to a slasher novel because at times you know it's just like so fast paced and you're going through all the motions and but in this one i connected to the character a bit like there was more tying me to her emotionally with but with us delving into her past sorry i'm still a little sick but um it was it was different in that sense from a slasher whereas when i read a slasher i usually don't care about the characters um and then of course she has her dog in there so that made everything like so much more stressful because i was very concerned about the very good girl leika and i just i was so nervous about the dog the whole time so when hairpin bridge came out i know there were some things um like discussions going around like what people didn't like about that one and i don't know if what i'm about to say makes sense but i loved no exit it is one of the most suspenseful thrilling books i've ever read i literally remember like standing up and like pacing my bedroom while i was reading it i thought it was predictable i guess the entire novel but that did not at all take away from the story and the entertainment of it um and then i read that right when it first came out i had time between no exit and hairpin bridge where I ended up enjoying Hairpin Bridge. It wasn't my favorite by any means, but it was an entertaining read. Um, and then I, I feel like the people who hated Hairpin Bridge didn't have much of a gap between No Exit and Hairpin Bridge. So when you read an amazing story and novel like No Exit, it's the next one's kind of tainted. I think that if you liked No Exit, liked Hairpin Bridge, you'll also like The Last Word. But if you didn't like Hairpin Bridge, but you liked No Exit, I still think you'll like The Last Word. I think especially for people who are interested in booktube and book talk and reviewing books, I think that makes like a fun little twist on this and like why she's being targeted. And although I also figured this novel out extremely early on, it was so fun and entertaining. Oh, going back, uh, I do have recency bias, I think, of course, but I think that The Last Word is my favorite of the three, followed by No Exit, then Hairpin Bridge. Again, this comes out April 25th. Highly recommend it. Um, I'm assuming it's going to be a very fun audiobook as well. I haven't heard it, of course, but it just seems like it's going to be like a really fun, fast-paced read for everyone. And I will put down in my description box some trigger warnings. I don't want to put them out here now because it could come. I know like it, to me sometimes trigger warnings are spoilery. But if you want trigger warnings for something that can get kind of like suspenseful, thrilling, and violent, um, I'll put them down there and then you can look at them if you need to or if you want to. But I highly recommend and thank you to William Morrow who sent me this novel. I was so happy to get it in the mail. I got it when me and my entire family had been sick for like two weeks and it was just a miserable time. But this got me some happiness. I was just so excited to find it on my doorstep. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below. If you've read this one already or any of other Taylor, Taylor Adams works and you want to discuss them, we can do that in the comments as well. And if you're watching this video in the future after the release of this book, let's talk about it. I really enjoyed this one and I hope you do too. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.